This is Amanda Andrews. She's a graduate of college a couple weeks ago. Now she's a graduate of the Villages High School. Greg's going to present her with a gift from you all uh, for her hard work. Greg? I'd like to pray that she doesn't break her ankle or twist her ankle. Wait, what? The superiority of the person of Christ, he's superior to the prophets, he's superior to Moses, he's superior to the high priest, he's superior to all anything that they could ever want to go back to. And so as a result of that, we've learned that, as, that we just need to be people that trust in his superiority. And so as we look into this, we're going to see the power of, of faith in Christ. And in one eleven, it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. That's what faith is. Faith is. That's really the only real description in the Scripture of faith. But it's now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. One of the things that when you talk to people, you'll say, I don't have any faith or I don't believe that. I can't. Why would I have faith in that? But the truth of the matter is that every time that we sit down in the pews or in the chairs back there, you have faith that the chair is going to hold you up. The conviction of things not seen. And so we're going to go through this. Uh, there's 19 by faith that uh, I counted a, a number of years ago. But by faith, we're going to see how, Ab how the, the forefathers, our forefathers in the faith, have gone through life trusting God and experiencing their faith uh, and that he would do what he says he's going to do. 
And that's really what we have to do, too. We have to live by faith. We have to live by the, the idea of the assurance of things hoped for, but the conviction of things not seen. We don't see uh, all of the things of heaven, but we hope for those because the Bible teaches us about them. And as a result of that, uh, we have conviction. We have conviction. We believe that God is honest and truthful, and he's going to carry through his promises. For it, in verse 2, for by it the men of old gained approval. He says that the, old, the older people, the people who have gone before us, by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. So by faith, the Bible says that Jesus, that God, the Holy Spirit were there, they spoke the world into existence. We didn't see that, but we by faith believe it. There's a lot of people in our world today that don't believe that's what happened. They, they believe other things happened and all that sort of thing, but we believe as as followers of God, of Christ, that he spoke the world, the Bible says, into existence. And uh, they were, it was not made out of things which are visible, but uh, he, he did that. And then by faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the uh, testimony that he was righteous, God testifying about his gifts, and through faith, through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. We don't know exactly the reason, but there was a blood sacrifice that Abel had, Cain didn't have, he brought the produce, and God accepted the blood. We talk about the blood through the whole scripture, the blood sacrifice, but he, and he said he offered what he was supposed to, and we still today, thousands of years later, still talk about him. And then by faith, uh, verse 5, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death, and he was not found because God took him up. For they obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. Remember Enoch, he walked with God and was no more. He didn't. There's no record of him dying. He just walked with God. He didn't come back to the village. He didn't come back. Then, well, where did old Enoch go? Well, he went with God. He walked with God. And he was pleasing to God. He lived his life that was pleasing. Verse 6, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. We come by faith to Christ. We come to faith by God. And that's how he knows that we trust him because we put our faith in him. And so as a result of that, he, the Bible says that he is a rewarder of those who have trusted trusted uh, Christ. What, what a great encouragement that should be to you and to me as we live our life out. We live by faith. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. We don't know the things that are going to happen. But we have conviction that it's going to be the best things for us as we live that out. And so as a result of that, God rewards us for his faith, our faith in Jesus. Verse 7, by faith, Noah, being uh, warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household by which he uh, condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness uh, which is according to faith. So here's the deal. Uh, old Noah, he was there. God stopped by said, Noah, you're going to build an ark. It's going to be these, these dimensions. It's going to be a big old ark. Uh, and you're going to uh, cut the wood here. It's going to take you. He, I don't think he told him how long it was going to take or he probably had been discouraged. But it's going to end up taking like 125 years. Uh, and remember, it never rained. It had never rained at that point. It was a perfect environment. People stop by, Noah, what are you doing? Building an ark, going to have a rainstorm, and everybody's going to die. And people laughed and scoffed at him for 125 years. And then he got on the boat, the rain started, he sealed up the boat, and uh, the rains came, and they came, and the only people left were Noah and his family. And the picture is that we, we speak the word out to the, to the world, and many people just discount it. But there is going to be a, a time when the end comes. But by faith, Noah was faithful. And in the midst of all the abuse and all the scoffing that he took, uh, he was darn glad he built the boat 125 years later. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, uh, obeyed by going out of the place which he was to receive for an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Uh, he, by faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents, 
with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Abraham lived in the Ur of Chaldees. He was called out. God stopped by one day and said, Abraham, pack up your... He didn't call him Abraham. He called him Abram that time. But he said, pack up your, your family and we're going to move, we're gonna move down, down. We're going to just go somewhere. And I, I always like this story because uh, Abraham, Abraham went home. He told Sarah, he said, we're going to move. Uh, we're going to pack up everybody. We're going to take off. And she said, where are we going? And he said, I don't know, but God said we're going to go. And she went along with him. That's really nice of her. <laughs> I mean, here's the deal. He, he's, we, we kind of discount the era of Chaldees, but the place that he lived was pretty actually sophisticated. We always think about the caves and all that stuff, but they had roads that were paved. They had running water in the house. It was a nice place. And he was going to go live in tents. He was going to become a, a goat herder. He was going to do that, and he left that because God told him to go because there was a promise, the promise of something even greater. And Abraham went through, and ultimately Abraham went through a great deal of struggle and suffering to get to be and to follow what God had called him to follow. And then so he was looking for the foundation, the city which was, has a foundation whose architect and builder is God. Verse 11, by faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who had promised. She was in her early 90s when she got conceived, um, and it was a, by faith. She Remember, she laughed at God's people when he came and said, you're going to have a baby, and and she kind of, <laughs> uh, and God said, oh, I hear you in there, Sarah. And so she still had the baby. But listen, over in Japan or China, I think it was China, I guess, uh, there was a couple that were 76 and 74. They just had a baby um, by artificial conception. I, I'm not quite 74 yet, but I'm pressing on to that. I don't want, uh, I, I don't really want any uh, children that are conceived and raised by me. The kids are okay and the grandkids, but I think there's a point, uh, and I, I believe it's like, 74 at least. <laughs> well, but Sarah, she, she by faith, uh, she considered him faithful and promised. Therefore also there was born to of one man and him uh, as good as dead at that, as many descendants as the stars of heaven in number and in innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. All these died in faith without receiving the promise, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Listen, Abram had a, uh, conceived with Sarah. Both of them were well beyond age. Remember what happened? Sarah said, I can't have a child, so he, she gave him a handmaid. But God was faithful. And, and God said, Abram, if you're faithful, Sarah, if you're faithful, you'll have more descendants than there are stars, and there are more than the sand that's on the sea. You'll have descendants that will... They didn't live to see that come true, but they. But we are in the in the process of seeing that happening, where more and more people are still coming to the Lord, uh, and they. But they were uh, having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on this earth. So Sarah and Abram, or Abraham, they lived, but they were strangers. They they lived very migrantly, and and they were aliens. The I, the picture is. Uh, if you were to go down to the uh, Sunshine Skyway at between St. Pete and. Uh, in Bradenton. You know what I'm talking about? The idea of being an alien there would be that you would go with your tent. You'd get yourself a tent and out in the middle of the skyway, way up there, you'd put your tent up and that's where you'd live. And because you're an alien, because you can't get any roots down. There's no way to get roots. The idea is that we're supposed to be Abraham and Sarah were aliens. They were able to move at a moment's notice. They were strangers in the places that we went. And that's what God wants us to be. We, he wants us as Christians to be be able to move on the call, to do the things that he calls us to do, not get so rooted down that we can't be effective. That doesn't mean we have to move around every couple of weeks, but that means that we need to live that way so we're not so tied down that we can't possibly, that we can't possibly make a difference. For those, in verse 14, for those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own, and indeed, if they had been thinking of the country from which they went out, they would have had an opportunity to return. They were thinking about what God promised 
a city that the builder and maker was God. They didn't think about going back to the Ur Chaldees. They didn't think about going to these other places that they'd come from. They were only thinking about what God had for them ahead. Uh, but as, as it is, they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. God prepared a city. He promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a city. He promises you and I that if we come to know him, that we too, even though we live here in the midst of, of all of the stuff that goes on around us, that we are promised a city that is built in heaven for you and I to go to reside for eternity. What a great promise. We looked in through uh, Revelation a year ago. We, we see that city. We see the, the magnificence and beauty of it. And that's what God has promised us, even in the midst of the place that we are now, which that may be a struggle, it may be difficult, but we, God has promised us, if we're faithful, that we too will be with him in eternity. Uh, but it, verse uh, 16, is, I'm going to read that again, but as it is, they desire a better country. That is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. He's a prepared a city for you. He's prepared a city for me. He's prepared a city for those that believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise was offering up his only uh, begotten son. It was he whom he was said, in Isaac, your descendant shall be called. He considered that God is able to raise mud even from the dead from which he also received them back, him back as a type. So Abraham has this child. He and Sarah have a child. And, and then God says, uh, I want you to go down to the mountain, and there's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of sticks there. There's an altar. I want you to get the sticks off. I want you to put Isaac on time down, and we're going to make a sacrifice of your son. And Isaac, he went up there and got on the pile, and Abraham was faithful to follow through. And just as he got everything ready and the fire was about to be, start, be started, there was a ram in the thicket. And God said, take him, remove Isaac. And the picture is ultimately the Son of God who came, the only begotten Son of God who came and was crucified, dead, and buried, and rose on the third day and ascended into heaven. The picture is that... God's going to not only provide the sacrifice, but in this case, he, he saved the sacrifice and provided another one. So Abraham was faithful all the way to the test. I, I don't know. Um, over the years, I thought about that. that. That's an amazing thing that Abraham was willing to do. That's amazing trust that he had in God. He had so much trust that he was willing to put his son on the altar. Uh, in verse 19, uh, he considered that God is able to raise men even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. And again, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even regarding things to come. By faith, Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, uh, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the exodus of the sons of Israel and gave orders concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Remember the king's edict, you kill all the young children, the young males, to kill them all. And they took, they took Moses down and put him in the, in the little basket. And what happened? But the king's daughter came and uh, found Moses, took him back, and then they were looking for somebody to raise him and just happened that Moses' mother became the one who cared for Moses all the time he was being raised up. Uh, God's really is amazing when you think about it. <laughs> you know, we, we get all befuddled, and, but God, by faith, will care, cares for us. Uh, and here's Moses. He's taking care of him. Growing up, uh, Moses was... Uh, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment from the people of God than to uh, enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the, the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking 
to the reward. He was looking to the reward. How about you? Are you looking to the reward that God has for us in eternity? Are you living because we're going to go through the struggles and difficulties we have, knowing that God is faithful to care for us? And, and Moses rebelled against the Egyptians, and then his people didn't, were ha weren't happy with it. He went into the desert. By faith, in verse 27, he left Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is unseen. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood so that he who destroyed the firstborn might not touch uh, them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as though they were passing through dry land and the Egyptians uh, when they attempted it were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the harlot did not perish along with those who were disobedient after she had welcomed the spies in peace. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, because might became mighty in war, but put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting their release, in order that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death, with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in, in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Listen to all the stuff that the Christians, the early Christians went through. Moses taking his people out and then by faith. And, and the people weren't too faithful, and so they ended up marching around the desert for 40 years. They had a two-week trip. took them 40 years. And they got rid of all the people that were doubtful. And we see all the things that go on. Listen, we, we live today in a time when there's turmoil. Just turn on the TV if you want to get upset. You turn the turmoil that goes on. But you, listen, you and I are people of faith, and we need to be people that trust that Jesus Christ is still in charge and that he's not going to do anything that won't allow us to ultimately receive the promise of being with him in heaven. That does not mean that we may not go through some difficulties, some struggles, all of the things that he just talked about here. But we need to keep our eye on Jesus. We need to keep our focus on the things that he has already done for us and to know that he cares for us so much that he died for us and that he's coming again for us and as a result of that we can have confidence we can have confidence in what Christ what Christ will do for us whether it's here today or whether it's we live through tomorrow whatever it is that comes upon us God is there for us and cares for us by faith now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I pray that your faith will grow day by day as you go through the things that you face each day in your life. The things that we, we see coming against us, that by faith that God will carry us through. By faith, he we will grow into what he would have us to be. And by faith, we look forward to the promise that he's given us, which is which is just the beauty and, well, as Graylin said, the golden streets of heaven. We have a God who never leaves us nor forsakes us. We have a God who is always, always, always right on time. So if you're going through something today, know that God knows about it. Know that God cares about it. And know that there may be something that we need to learn in the midst of it. But as a result of that, we know that God is faithful. He's faithful to care for us. He's faithful for us, to us, to be able to draw through whatever that situation is.
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We pray, Father, that we will be people of faith. Uh, we look through the, this chapter of the, the men and women of faith, and we just see just so many of them, so many difficulties, so many struggles, and that how you always challenge them when they don't know what the outcome is going to be. And really, our life is challenged. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. Only the promise that you have is that we will be with you in heaven. And so we know that you care for us, that you carry us through. We know that you are concerned about us and that you are working your good through us. So we just pray that we'll be faithful and that we'll be men and women that follow you and respond to you in a way that brings glory to you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing uh, Just a Closer Walk walk with Thee. Keep me from all wrong. 